To install the Flockoff system, you will need basic tools. Depending on the structure, you may need specific hardware. A non-contact voltage tester will be needed to verify the system is working properly. How you attach the capacitors will depend on the structure and the kit you purchased. With any kit, the capacitors need to be spaced no more than 5 feet apart. Lay out the roof capacitors all facing the same way and the last capacitor opposite. When the cable is pulled taut, this will prevent the base of the capacitor from bending. To install the roof capacitor, you can screw them into the substructure and or apply adhesive to the bottom of the unit. If you're only using adhesive, you will need to allow the proper cure time before installing the wire. To install the metal clip capacitor, you simply slide the clip onto the edge. The metal clips can fit up to one quarter inch thick. For the tile clip capacitor, you slide the clip to the front edge of the tile. For the magnet clip capacitor, you attach the magnet to the substructure. With the capacitors in place, it is now time to wire up the system. The system does not need to loop back on itself. At your starting capacitor, you place a ring and spring. You can give the ring a twist to snug it up to the capacitor. On the first capacitor, take the 22 gauge stainless steel wire and run it through the spring. Take the wire and wrap on itself five to six times. Now, run the wire to the next capacitor and wrap around the capacitor once, going clockwise. For the system to operate correctly, all capacitors must be wrapped clockwise. Repeat this process until you have reached the last capacitor. When you reach the last capacitor, add a ring and spring and run the wire through and wrap on itself five to six times. Inspect the system to make sure the wire has not contacted any metal, as that will ground out the system. If you need to ground the system, locate a metal grounding source and wrap the stainless steel wire around it. Then, wrap the stainless steel wire around the mounting hardware or metal base of the capacitor. If needed, you can branch off the main line. Add a ring and spring to the capacitor and run the stainless steel wire through and wrap on itself five to six times. Continue down the line wrapping capacitors clockwise. On the last capacitor, add a ring and spring. If you encounter an obstacle in the way of your installation, you will need to create an insulated jumper to get around the obstacle. Measure the distance between the two capacitors. Cut a length of double insulated wire a few inches longer. Strip each end one to two inches. Run the insulated wire through the spring on one end and wrap exposed wire around the stainless steel wire five or six times. Repeat on the other side. Do not power the system on until all the components are installed. You should install the power supply as close to the initial capacitor as possible. The sides of the unit have tabs for you to screw the unit onto the substructure. You can add epoxy to help secure the unit if needed. If you are installing on a metal structure, magnets can be mounted to the back. When using a GFCI outlet, it is recommended that you start with the power regulator at 50%. Next, you will install the insulated wire that will plug into the power supply. Determine the length of insulated wire you will need from the power supply to your first capacitor and strip one to two inches of wire from the end. The barrel plug should be installed on the other end. Run the stainless steel wire through the spring on the first capacitor. Wrap five or six times around the main stainless steel line. Take the other end with the barrel plug and insert into the capacitor output. Once the power supply is mounted and the insulated wire is installed, you can power on the system. Plug the system into an outlet. In order to test if the system is working, take your non-contact voltage tester and place near the capacitor to make sure it is working. If you have no power, 
first check to make sure the reactor is plugged in. Then, verify there is power to the outlet with a non-contact voltage tester. Next, do a visual inspection to make sure the system is not contacted metal and grounded out the system. If capacitors are not registering power, make sure you did not wrap the wire in the wrong direction. If you created a jumper, make sure it is contacting the main wire and has not made any contact with bare metal. Always power down the system before performing any maintenance.